<laughs> oh my goodness. Well, hello, good people. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's had a great day. You know, I, I, I was out at my fish pond and I shot a video down there and stuff because, you know, you, you listen to all of the experts out there that have been killing the Cowboys that, you know, the, the doom and gloom, they tell you how bad the Cowboys are going to be, that, uh, you know, everybody has left them behind because of all the free agent booze. That the Cowboys, you know, haven't signed Dak, and how could they go into the last year of a deal? Well, that's unheard of. It's like, um, you, do you know the history of the Cowboys? Um, they let everybody get to the last year. That's why you had Emmett Smith holding out and wanting more money and stuff. That's why you had Zeke Elliott holding out for more money and Zach Martin. Um, they they don't like to pay. You know, most rich people didn't get rich by paying everybody else. And that's why they always look for somebody else to pay the bill um, and so on. In fact, I remember one of the investment thing, things they always tell you is never use your own money. You're always supposed to use somebody else's money to make money. Be that as it may. Big Sills, Big Sills, my buddy, was on early today. I, I was sitting here looking at, at 2 o'clock for his live stream, and I'm like, where, where is it? I don't see it live. And he was on today early. I don't know if this is going to be a regular thing or not, but it seemed like he got up on the wrong side of the bed because he was, somebody must have peed in his Wheaties because it seems like this turd is rolling downhill and it's gathering more shit. This shit storm that is going through here and, uh, and speaking of shit storm, oh my God. Um, there's, there's a YouTuber out there who, Mike, I know you watch him, who eats, goes to foreign countries and eats all these crazy foods and stuff. Um, he, uh, I, I, it's, they, they had the soup in the Philippines that they called shit juice soup. And they use the, sh the, the, the stuff out, the, the, the shit juice out the cow's stomach. That, it, it, to, to, uh, the, I'm, I'm, I'm being serious. It's shit soup, shit juice soup. I shit you not on that one. And I have to say that right now, the Eagles are more shitty are more shitty than he's below it what is the hardest part of maintaining oh, here, uh, here it is rice field dry that's the cause so rice field to be eroded so the farmers philippines cow shit juice rice soup always have water not to be i can't do this dried up meet fidel the farming expert who caught our breakfast snails and now he'll be catching another mysterious ingredient these pools are full of many different types of life. It might be hard to see, but right this guy. here, there is a loach trap. Best food pet. ever review. Loaches are slimy, eel-like fish found in freshwater bodies around Asia, Europe, and some parts of Africa. Loaches. Um, I think there's some. I like some. This is the opening, the entrance of the loach. Okay, and the okay. And uh, other uh, end is the... Exit. All right, so this is Eagle's shit soup listen to my buddy <laughs> listen to my buddy big sales we got us on earlier cuz right now the news in philly i feel like i'm in washington dc <laughs> like a political party and it's like covering the white house right now the drama. But I love it. Do, no matter what time it is. Big Sills. Two hours of power here today. Two hours of shit talking on the so Eagles. Let me get right into it here. 
again, it's really like covering politics here and what's going on with this Eagle team. We're 35 days to the start of training camp. How are you feeling about this? You feeling good? Your team ready to rock? I'm going to say this to you guys, and I'll say it again. I'm really now becoming a guy who's leaning this way. The roster is set. It's one of the better rosters. It's one of the better rosters in the NFC for sure. I wouldn't say in the AFC because I still don't think you have the quarterback. But I do think you have one of the better rosters. But are you going to be able to get out of your way? That'll be the question. By the way, let's see if we can get to at least 100 plus when it comes to likes. Please hit the like button here. The drama's been a lot. A lot. Like this, I haven't heard Howard Eskin, Howard Eskin walk that comment back yet. Like they make Kurtz and all the rest of the players and coaches walk comments back. If they say something mm. that the organization thinks shows a bad light on them. Mm-hmm. Go on. They 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 haven't asked him to walk that back, so now I believe it. That this was a shot across the bow. Now, do I believe after the 2024 season that the Philadelphia Eagles are going to move on? I do not. But you know what I do believe? That they did throw a shot across the bow at Jalen Hurts and told him, hey, dude, exactly what we've been saying here. Hey, man, you got to start acting like a franchise guy, like Jason Kelsey does or did. I think Jalen Hurts doesn't act in the best interest at times for the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, again, he's a young player. And he roll into that, hey, his agency also has to help him. Hey, look, these people gave you $250 million. Let me ask you something. $250 million. Look, look, This is where it gets good. It's a great angle that the Eagles – the, do the Eagles have a case here that they're upset with him? Do the Eagles have a case? Let me, let me lay their case out. And then you lay Jalen's case out on why they don't and have a problem with him. Okay, look at, and again, you know what's crazy about this? This has nothing to do with playing football. It has everything to do with being the face of the franchise. Look at their case. Game a bag of money up front. They signed them prematurely. They gave them 50 million bucks, making them one of the highest paid players. Tell you what, you go like this. Hey, Sills, you know. Just because he got to the Super Bowl, we've seen other franchises not give money mm-hmm. to players. They waited. Brock Buyer's remorse. That money for getting a football team to a Super Bowl. 49ers didn't pop up and make him one of the highest paid players. Okay? James Car- Carver, you guys are awesome, and I appreciate that. All Super Chats go to the top, guys. Just... For the Vise Fund, for you and Xander, for big sales today. Shout out for the Super Chats. Hey, James, thank you so much, my friend. Of course, this is live, Spike. You think big sales is going to put something on tape so you can watch it later? This is live, brother. Come on now, Spike. We appreciate that, James. Thank you so much, man. You're awesome. Well, th- think about what the Eagles have done here. Boy. They paid him early. Ooh. They, they they put a ton of talent around them. Oh. They built the team. You can't do a simple thing by getting in front of a press conference <sighs> and acting like a franchise quarterback. Or maybe Jalen doesn't want to. Something's up. Look, Implosion. Will this fester? Talk about it here in a second. By the way, we're going to have a little fun here today for a couple hours. Big sales, bold predictions for the Eagles and the NFL. We're going to do that. But here, let's let's get into the topic here. Also, we're going to take a look at the Steelers. That's the Week 15 opponent here for the Eagles as we've gone through some of the teams that they're going to play this year. Amber, is it a coincidence Hurt's best year he spent time in the offseason with Tom House? No. Amber, I don't think that. 
that was a coincidence. But I do think, Amber, one of the things that Jalen Hurts had an advantage of, nobody had game film on him. They really oh, know is that something I'm going to look at? <laughs> and what the Eagles did in <laughs> You know, I'm not going to say that Dan Salio is a great mind or, okay, or anything like that, but I believe Mark Holmes said the exact same thing about Jalen Hurts. You know, what's funny is because I said, you know, it, 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 it's crazy. Because after that great season, you know, because going into that season, people had questioned about Jalen Hurts on if he was going to be the guy. Because I remember how talking to Philly 500, he said, our season is all going to depend on if Jason, if, if Jalen Hurts is the guy or not. He said, I don't know if he is. But if he's not, we've got those first round picks. We'll get another guy. So there were questions going into that season. And I said, you know, here's the thing about Jalen Hurts is, you know, teams don't have the film on him to know exactly what they're going to do. And once they did, once they had him for a season, and I looked at a lot of those touchdowns, you know how many times it seemed like the the middle of the field was the Red Sea parting? And it would open up, and it was just basically right up the middle. And I'm not saying that he wasn't talented enough to recognize that and be able to do it. But I remember saying to Philly, I said, you know what? Jalen Hurts will run. But I guarantee you, you won't get a free alley to go up to the middle. I said, every defensive coordinator is going to say, we will not abandon the middle of the field with Jalen Hurts. We're going to make him go around the outside, around the outside. Buffalo girls go around the outside. Now, that didn't eliminate the tush push. But I bet you that the tush push won't be as effective because defensive coordinators right now, are trying to devise ways to stop it. That's what they do. That's their job. And they are pretty good with that stuff. So you could look and say that two things happened with Jalen Hurts. One, he wasn't as effective running in the middle. And because he wasn't as effective, that cut down on the easy passes. And see, that's what happened to RG3. Because I believe I kind of said, what if... He is like RG3. Now, RG3 got hurt, but then again, you could say Jalen Hurts was playing hurt. Um, because a lot of RG3's great touchdown passes were because they were worried about him running that people would abandon their coverage. And it was easy lobs to guys that were wide open. So they didn't have to be perfect passes. But once they learned, keep them in the pocket, it was the end of basically RG3 being a viable super weapon and i think you've kind of had some of that happen right now but the whole situation where now we got buyer's remorse and i believe i said to dan yesterday what it feels like to me is he is looking at this and thinking excuse me he's looking at this and maybe jalen hurts is trying to hit the eject button it could be but hey you know, I'm just a Cowboy fan, and, and of course, everything's awful for us. Hope you all having a great day, and I will see you guys soon.